Hello everybody, I hope you are having a fantastic day. I am about to do some experimentation and I thought I'd bring you guys along for the ride. So this is a very cool board uh, sponsored by PCBWay. I'm not gonna spend a whole lot of time talking about the board itself because I think it deserves an entire video. You guys don't seem to like my retro stuff as much, so we'll see. But this board attaches to a Raspberry Pi Zero and does a pixel perfect job of turning basically any kind of retro computer into an HDMI out so that you can use it on a modern monitor. The thing you may notice is that it has a bunch of SMD components on it, including that chip right in the middle. And uh, I suck at soldering that kind of stuff. So I am taking my first crack at reflow soldering in a toaster oven. Now I have seen a bunch of videos of how to modify toaster ovens and do all kinds of stuff and turn them into reflow ovens. I've looked at buying that two or $300 one off Amazon that you need to do a whole lot of work on. But every once in a while, somebody says, you know what, you should just use the thing unmodified. And uh, you know, people go back and forth on that, but I've figured out that it seems to be a common set of things that people do to make these things work unmodified. And so I'm gonna try that right now. Now, trick number one of what you need is apparently a low temperature solder paste. Um, you can use lead and you can use some other things in there, but what people seem to like is this No Clean Chip Quick SMD LTL FP10, and I'll let you look at the specs right there. Now, this stuff doesn't last very long. They say it expires January 18th. It is now something like June 3rd or 4th. So this stuff costs about 20 bucks, but it is apparently pretty special when it comes to doing this. So uh, the first thing I've done is I have taken a scrap of wood here and I have taped down some old PCBs to form a little form uh, for putting in my board. Now, I used way more PCBs than I needed to, and I let this one kind of move because I wanted some options on how I get this thing out of here. But essentially what I did was I made a little pocket for this thing to fit in, and then a hinge here. I'm using gaffer's tape. I love gaffer's tape. I'm um, using a little hinge here. We're, I think we're pretty good. Uh, so that this thing repeatedly goes down in the exact same spot. Um, now from the camera's perspective, it looks off. From my perspective, it looks on. Uh, we'll see if I need to do some adjustments. Now again, this is my very first crack at this. Uh, this isn't one of those YouTuber-y things where I've done it a bunch of times and then you know, I'm showing it to you like I magically know what I'm doing. So I'm giving this a shot as is and we'll go through the process if I did it wrong. Now the next thing I have is this toaster oven right here. And this is the Kitchen Smith, and I bought it at Target, and it was 30 bucks. Now, in today's America, um, that's actually a good price for this type. Now, the trick for these seems to be to get one that uses a quartz heating element. There are some that use infrared that heat up certain components faster than others. There are some that use resistive technology, which is uh, apparently too slow for the curve you need, but they say that um, the quartz heating elements seem to be the best of both worlds. Now, what I've done in here, just as an initial test, I wanted to burn off any oils and stuff that were in there, but I'm using my Kiwitz HT118A, and I stuck its little temperature probe in there, and um, found that 300 degrees will hit me right around 164 degrees Celsius, which is the profile that this thing wants. As you can see here, looking at the bottom one, they want this thing to get up to about 165 degrees and then begin to drop down. And now um, what I think I'm gonna do is most people say to just turn it on and let it go. And I think that's exactly what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna turn it on and let it go. And when the temperature hits 165, I'm gonna open the door and then a couple seconds later, I'm gonna take the entire tray out and we'll see what happens. So the first thing I'm gonna do is um, dispense a little bit of this solder paste. Now, because uh, I'm not trying to be too specific, I'm not gonna to worry too much about how I put it on there, what I put it in, but I'm going to use one of these RFID cards that comes with the Arduino kit. Uh, I had a ton of these left over from another project. So what I'm gonna do, and I probably should have gone from the top down because that's where my hinge is. So be working against my hinge, but I think we'll be fine. We're just gonna go ahead and smear this across. Uh, first things first, this stuff spreads really well. I've seen some other people do this on YouTube, and I'll say that's pretty impressive. I will say, um, when I made the circuit board, I actually had PCBWay, I just checked a box 
telling them that I wanted this stencil and PCBWay just whipped out the stencil and uh, I didn't have to like define anything. They were smart enough to figure out what is an SMD component and what I would want stenciled and what I wouldn't. And so uh, I did absolutely nothing. And so you can see that gave me a nice, smooth, clean application and uh, really, really happy with that. Of course, I haven't lifted the lid yet, so we'll see. Let's lift her up. Heck yeah, that looks good. Okay. Yeah, there we go. Okay, I'm pretty dang happy with that. So uh, now I need to place some components. Okay, so I have my components out and they are very well spread out so I don't accidentally mix them up. Now I'm sure some of them will go flying throughout this procedure, but I'm going to place the components. All right, and there you have it. If I had it to do over again, I would put the chip down before I put the capacitors down because uh, the chip kind of knocked the capacitors out of the way. I had them perfect, had to redo those. But other than that, um, it looks pretty dang good, at least from my eyes. So we're gonna go ahead and put it in the oven and fire it up. So I put this thing under the Andon Star microscope and uh, for a first run, I don't think I could possibly be happier. Um, when you look at this thing up here, let's see, let me get the chip in focus. Um, it looks like they're sitting a little bit on top of the solder, but they are absolutely stuck. So maybe a little bit slower bake time or something like that. It looked like we were about a minute ahead of the curve um, in terms of where they want us to be and i have an idea for that as well but man that is impressive like every single pin is stuck i got down there with a little pin and tried to lift any ones that look like they could even theoretically be loose but ideally i'd like to see them a little bit more like that where they're covered in solder and some of that probably could just be me pushing the chip down harder when i put it on the board but for a first run my gosh that's awesome uh so i think i am going to do some more of these and we're i'm going to probably experiment with a couple things and we'll see uh what we think yeah i'd like to see a little bit of that flux boiled off a little bit more i'd like to see us do a little bit slower of a curve but man that's impressive all right so i made a total of five of these boards i was going to make more of them but there are different boards that use this same chip so i wanted to hold off until i was sure that i actually wanted 10 of these things but in the meantime I made five of them. I tried varying the technique a little bit, um, but ultimately I think the first technique is the way to go. Um, you basically just send it. Uh, that gives me a total of six of these things with the one that I got from Retro Hack Shack. I do want to thank Aaron over at Retro Hack Shack for both um, this board, which I bought from his store, and a little bit of tech support for programming and just kind of getting these CPLDs right. But um, these ones here, I ordered the boards from AliExpress. Uh, it is something like $25 for the boards. You can get cheaper shipping, so you can wind up getting them delivered maybe 10 of them for around $35. And then there's uh, this chip is about five bucks and I've got a couple dollars worth of other parts on the board. So for around 10, 12 bucks each, you can make these things where they do sell for 50 to $60 online, including shipping. So um, making them yourself is a pretty good way to go and a lot of fun. Uh, and with a simple toaster oven, it can be done really well. Now, I tried some different techniques. I tried to slow the process down by cracking the door open of the toaster oven and allowing it to just basically not be able to heat up as fast. And I tried um, raising it and then turning it off and letting it sit for a minute and then turning it back on and all that kind of stuff. But ultimately, you know, just sending it up to 165, 175 degrees Celsius seemed to be the way to go. Now I will say when I went a little hotter into the 175 range and let it sit there for just a little bit longer, it did boil off a little bit more of the flux. But overall, um, I was really happy with it. 
So because this isn't really a retro channel, I didn't spend a lot of time talking about the board itself, but these things are really cool. They fit on top of a Raspberry Pi Zero. And as you can see, there's a little pin header in there. And that header is for a cable. And what is that cable? Well, that cable is basically whatever you want it to be. Uh, this one is a nine pin connector. And uh, this will allow me to plug in any old IBM-ish computer. So you're talking the, uh, the original IBMs that use CGAs, some of the later ones that use EGAs, the Tandy 1000s that had the Tandy graphics, and all that kind of stuff. And I'm able to plug that in and get just a perfect picture on an LCD. Now, you can make different styles of cables for this thing to use Apples and BBC Micros and, you know, just dozens and dozens of styles of retro computers. And in fact, there's also another daughter board that you can plug in in here that will um, allow you to do some analog things as well. And so um, it is a very cool thing. The problem is, is that once you have one, you want five or six of them because you want one for your Tandys and one for your Commodores and one for this or that. And by going to PCBWay.com, who sponsored this video, I was able to get the circuit boards and put them together. And now I can pre-program these for the different styles of computers I have and uh, not have to keep taking this one apart every time uh, I want to change computers. So I do want to thank them for sponsoring this video. I want to thank Aaron over at Retro Hack Shack for uh, the tech support. And I want to thank you guys for watching. If you're interested, uh, whether you're interested in this board or some of the techniques in general, I want you to check the description. I've got some links of some of the stuff that I used in there. And uh, yeah, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.